All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Giro podcast. I hope you this finds you well. I hope you're all safe. Um, I'm joined by a uh, one of our regular customers, but a local uh, pro, Rory Townsend. Rory. Hey, mate. How are you? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Happy to be out the house. So I know, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, look, thanks very much for, for coming down. We'll get we'll get right into it, really. Um I mean, for those of you, those of you who don't know who you are and what you do, maybe just give give a, a, a short sort of rundown of 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 who you are. Um, so, well, as you you know, as you said in the intro, I'm sort of um, fairly local to Giro and based just out in Jersey. So um, that's that. And then I have been a pro now since 2016, yeah. um, riding with the Continental Team um, bike. Uh, sorry, Canyon Canyon DHB as we as we're sort of currently known. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of been my story to date. So I suppose if any of the listeners will know me, it will be from potentially the Tour of Britain last year where I took the Sprints jersey or uh, maybe winning the National Series um, a couple of years ago. Yeah. So either one of those things. But yeah, we we spend most of our time racing in, in Belgium, France, yeah. China, so yeah, <laughs> wherever, yeah. Wherever, wherever we get to. So, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on is, is you know, we've been open here for nearly eight years now. Yeah. And pretty much known you almost from the entirety of that time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, and you've been sort of relatively local. It's and funny, yeah, because you opened and we would, my, my parents used to run the triathlon exhibition next door in right. Sandown. That's so, right. Yeah, we, we, we've come here from, from day dot, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know that was when you know getting sort of to know the scene a little bit more and and you were racing for the time with was it pedal heaven mm. yeah that's right yeah and you know you were i mean gosh so what's that you know six seven years ago so this was before you were even 20 how old were you like 18 19 i think i would have been no i was younger i was 16 I 16 15, 16 yeah and you know from a local level you know you were making impact you know you were entering races getting up there winning yeah. And it's just, I mean, so, so I'm, I'm saying this from, from not to kind of, you know, sort of blow smoke up your ass. I'm saying this from the standpoint of it was like originally, because I did a bit of work with your old man with regards to mm-hmm. the, the triathlon show and you were his son. And it was like, oh, actually, it's not just, you know, his son, like this guy is, is really good and has got the potential to, to sort of go somewhere. Yeah. So maybe just talk through those early days of kind of getting into racing. Or I mean, even how you got into cycling, how that transitioned into racing. And, and you know, now you are... I mean, it cul- well, I mean, for me, from, from my standpoint, it culminated in watching you up in Harrogate race in the World Championships, which is just amazing. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny. Yeah, you mentioned my dad because, you know, like like most kids who, who were, you know, riding at that age, you know, it was so much of that was, was thanks to him. Yeah. Um, you know, cycling is not always the most inclusive sport and it, it, no. it does take a bit of investment, whether that's from, you know, mum, dad, or nowadays from the various sponsors that we're lucky enough to have. Yeah. Um, so he was he was a lot of the driving force and um at at that stage back then um it's hard to sort of pinpoint the exact date but yeah i i i started, i was quite ill around that time um i had glandular fever which is undiagnosed and that oh, really? that really knocked me that knocked me back um quite a bit so um it's interesting you say that you felt like i was making an impact cuz i don't really remember doing anything until I suppose 2016. Okay. Um, which is that would have been the year that I actually won the jersey the okay. that you have on the wall. So yeah. that was that was when I felt like I was sort of in in amongst it anyway. And um, so what, what jersey was that? What what team was that? So this is this is back with Pedal Heaven. Yeah. And uh, that is the Sprints jersey from the Tour series. Yeah. Okay. Um, which at the time was like you know it was, it was a really big deal for me. Yeah. Um, being you know quite young and just coming through and it was just exciting so well that was a really time exciting and or sorry a really exciting time in the UK for sort of the professional scene because there was a lot more of from a spectator standpoint and a publicity standpoint there was just a lot more going on mm. you know there was the, the tour series that were going doing these crits around different city centers um which you know a, a couple of years ago was at Brooklands around the corner repping yeah um but there was just a lot more there was just a lot more publicity and it was great to kind of see a local face really at the center of it and performing really well yeah um yeah i, I don't know how to uh, <laughs> how to respond but it's um 
no, it was good. And like for, I really felt like I needed to make it sort of make my mark in the UK yeah. before even thinking about further afield because yeah. I think I needed to prove something to myself in, in, in some aspect. Like yeah. I raced as a youth and a junior and um, I can't make the point enough that like I was hopeless. Sure. I mean, I really like, I was really way off it. Okay. Um, and it's it's weird to think about think about it now, thinking like, God, what you know, what was even like driving me at that point? Yeah. So, so what what age were you? What are we talking about now? From so I, I started riding at, at Hillingdon when I was twelve. Okay, and I'm talking like all the way even through like juniors. Yeah, where you know you'd expect that's where a lot of kids start to to actually show their promise and things. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I, I was hopeless. Like I, I don't think I ever ever even top ten the national junior series. Mm -hmm. um, so it was yeah that, that's that's why as well like i needed to sort of make my mark in the uk a little bit um you know just for my own confidence because yeah. I'd, ne I'd never had or experienced any of that kind of success i yeah. sort of had this inner belief that i was like meant you know for something better and, I, and that i felt like i had something that's interesting there was nothing on paper to really show that that was true can you in in hindsight can you like distill down like what that was was probably just, just, just like an inner arrogance sure <laughs> like, yeah, yeah yeah honestly like there was i really don't know what it was um and it was only when i went so i, I went to uni after i was a junior not having sort of proved anything to myself that i was going to be you know do anything in the sport so yeah i sort of went to uni and figured you know that would be my path and then it was only sort of when i was at uni that i felt like looking back that stuff started to happen yeah i sure. think it was like Mm, that was me accepting or at least thinking I was accepting the fact that I wasn't going to be a pro mm. um, and I was going to pursue something else. And then as a result, <laughs> loads of the pressure that I was obviously putting on myself yeah. was suddenly relinquished. Yeah, yeah. And I was riding purely because I wanted to yeah. um, rather than, you know, feeling like I had to. And yeah, that was just sort of quite liberating. And I think that was where things started to turn around. And that, that was the year that I then started off by winning like something like, I won like the university champs and okay. won like a few national Bs and then mm. things just started, you know, ticking. And and I dealt with so much, um, you know, adversity in terms of like never really being successful. I was used to like losing. Yeah. That every win felt like, you know, I was like, oh, that's, that's great. And yeah. I didn't expect any more as such. Yeah, yeah, sure. So. That's amazing. Yeah. So this was so this was leading into twenty sixteen. So twenty fifteen is when you started at uni, and and that was when you know you just kind of said, look, I'm just going to take the pressure off. Yeah. Um, and what did you study at uni? Sports science. Okay. Just fine. at St Mary's up the road. Oh yeah, so. nice. Um, so yeah, I sort of muddied through that degree as well as best as I yeah. could whilst trying to balance the riding. Yeah. Um, not particularly well, but. It's, it's kind of what happens. Cycling is one of those sports that you know it can consume every every hour of your day. So yeah, of course. I mean, maybe sort of you know sort of talk about that because you know obviously at the minute you are a professional. You know you are mm. full time. You know you're you, you know you are given the luxury of having the time to be able to train to you know dedicate as much time to it as possible. You know when you're at uni. You know what did your training look like? You know because that because I mean to. I think we can all agree, like if you're going to be a, a good cyclist, it's a lot of time in the saddle. Mm. And were you doing that out on the road? Were you doing that indoors? Like what did it, what did this kind of, you know, for you, what was it looking like? No, I've never, I've never done loads indoors. Like I've avoided it where possible. Yeah. Um, except for the gym actually, which interesting, is something that I've always loved doing. As in weights? Yeah, yeah, weight, yeah. weight training and yeah. things. I've, I've, I've always been quite, quite a fan of, yeah. um, which was useful being at the, at the university as well. Mm. But I, I just sort of make the most of the days that I, you know, the, the less intense days of uni. Mm. Um, I'm very much like a all or nothing kind of character. Yeah. And so it was better for me to be like, say all cycling on one day and all uni on another. Yeah. Um, on the days that, you know, the two would um, clash, you know, I, I would struggle. It was, you know, I'd be doing, I'd be trying to make the most of like having a 20 minute nap here and there, like after, after a bike ride. So at least I could focus on, on, yeah, on trying to do a little bit of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was never, I was never great at, at finding the balance, to be honest. And yeah. as well, like I really found it hard to motivate myself for uni yeah. as well. Um, 
when you're thinking, you know, people that you're racing, you know, they're not having, they're not having to do this. And so I, ha I definitely had a bit of a negative sort okay. of outlook on my university at that, at that time, which is a shame really. I kind of wish I'd done the cycling and then, you know, yeah, gone back. Sure. I mean, but you know, you're in a fortunate position in that because you graduated. Mm. So, I mean, you're in a position now where you've got a degree, which a lot of, you know, other guys around you probably won't, mm. which is pretty cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> the, um, so obviously you were starting to get more results on the road with, uh, with Pedal Heaven. And then the opportunity came up to join a new team, which I remember when it happened, it was like, I think you came in here and kind of said, I can't really tell anybody, but you know, this is happening. Yeah. And this was the, the Bike Channel Canyon. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And so what year was that? That was 2017. 2017. And so tell me a little bit about, because they came in with pretty big plans, you know, so, mm -hmm. so when, how did they approach you from Pedal Heaven and, you know, what was that process to kind of go up to that? And what was the difference between where the ranking of where Pedal Heaven was to the ranking of the Bike Channel Canyon and their plans? Well, there's, a lot, there's actually, there was a lot of similarities between the two in that effectively Bike Channel went from where Pedal Heaven left. So it was still the same manager, Tim, yeah. just with a different, a whole different, you know, group of sponsors um, and everything was a bit different. The, the, I suppose the best thing about it was that when we arrived with Pedal Heaven, it was effectively like um, a very successful shop team. Yeah. But ultimately it was, you know, only had an interest in, in the UK yeah. and racing here. Whereas yeah. Bike Channel and, and especially with Canyon coming on board was was more of a, look on to you know the european races so yeah. straight away we got we got ourselves into uh ron ron van drenth okay big race in in holland um known by a lot of riders as ron van death <laughs> so um give you a bit of uh, an idea of what it's like so uh we were straight into the deep end there but yeah. it, you know it, it had the feeling of like a more professional outfit um you know results driven mm. and um getting exposure to those bigger races in, in Europe was, yeah. was a great, was sort of a great experience. So maybe let's just talk about that a bit. Cause that's the bit that I find sort of like really fascinating. Cause obviously the UK has got a pretty established sort of, you know, race scene here, mm. but there's always the talk of going out to Belgium or Holland and doing this, some of these commesses yeah. and just how, how brutal they are. So yeah. maybe kind of like from your standpoint, as somebody who's obviously got some legs, goes out, what's, what, maybe can you clarify what the difference is between race, like high level racing here to some of those kind of like brutal races over there? We often say in the team, the races in the UK are like the easiest to get around, but okay. the hardest to win. Okay, interesting. Because they are, um, they're so aggressive by nature and it's not that they don't, they don't take on a natural, the way a natural race would go with like, you know, a breakaway goes, someone else rides and, and, and so on. Sure. Belgium and, and things like that, they're equally hard to win <laughs> and even harder to get yeah. around. So, um, and is that just because of the nature of it just being attack after attack or is it a little bit more, I mean, yeah, maybe is it the weather? Like, what, what is it that makes it difficult? There's always something, you yeah. know, in those races that they throw in, um, whether it's, you know, it's cobbled, with narrow lanes, whatever it might be. Um, but equally, like, the level of racing out there is just is just so high. Yeah. Um, you know, most most of the guys who, who race in the professional teams out there, you know, they've done it. Yeah. You know, they've been riding since they could walk. Yeah. So um, it's very much a way of life out there and you know if anyone gets the opportunity to go out and just even watch some comess racing yeah that gives you the best feel of what it's like to be a cyclist in belgium yeah, they're, they're, sure. it's, a, it's like a celebration it's yeah. like a, you know it's a festival of of cycling um i mean the last podcast we did we did a like a preview of flanders mm. and you know just sharing the stories from the years that we've been out there and it's it's not like watching bike racing over here it's just completely different the whole family's out and it's this mad fun celebration mm -hmm. you're like what for a cycle race like? i think as well like they they really understand the sport they're absolutely. very knowledgeable absolutely um, i've got to say like some of the some of the crowds that we get to Britain in yorkshire are phenomenal especially yeah, yeah. yorkshire they're incredible yeah, yeah. but i i think more often than not that's more about people trying to celebrate in their their county mm. and, and and their area mm. whereas you get the the sort of hardy belgian fans and things like that yeah and you see all the you know the Van Avermaet supporters club and so <laughs> yeah, on, like these yeah. people that they know what they're looking for. And, and so that, that's always like yeah. an interesting one as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amazing. So when was your first sort of trip out there? 
Well, it was that. It was probably that that Ronda Ronda Van Drenth, and um, I remember thinking, <laughs> I, I can't like this is it. Like, I can't. I am not up to this. Yeah. At all. I was, felt so far out of my depth. Yeah. Um, and then interestingly, I've probably felt like that in every race. Yeah. yeah. Every the first race of every season, it turns out, is like that. So, yeah. Um, but I think that one was particularly trying. It was just a narrow, horrible sort of. 200k of, of roads cobbles um so you not only got the 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 physical sort of like strain of the 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 of the, the, yeah. the, the 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 speed yeah. but you've got the stress it was it, ha it was more the stress yeah. it wasn't i don't think necessarily phys physically i was out of my depth even though i probably felt like i was at the time yeah because as well you it's so you're so quick to forget that yeah. when you're suffering you know everybody else is suffering. of course i've it, always yeah. been bad at like yeah about <laughs> yeah. about not you know considering that yeah, yeah that's funny that, that is the truth of it and it happens at every level um definitely happens at my level <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so yeah that that one really was a shock to the system but thankfully um things improved from there and you know 2017 was actually quite a successful year for yeah. me so yeah. yeah i mean that team you know took you around the world and still mm. is mm. i mean you um because that the the Team quickly changed from. I think Bike Channel were only involved for one year. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And then it became Canyon D H. Canyon Iceberg. Canyon D H. Uh, right. Canyon yeah, Iceberg. Yeah yeah. 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 So I lose track. And you've been well. and you've been involved from from day one. Yeah. 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 yeah pretty much. Well, I, if, considering like the Pedal Heaven days, where where Tim Elverson, our manager, was there as well. I've, mm. I've been with him since the end of 2012. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mac, Mac, Max and I've. Of Max Stedman and I, yeah, yeah. with the uh, the old soldiers. How there. funny! <laughs> so um, yeah. So maybe just talk about because um, obviously there's a big step up from the UK scene up to that kind of like European and global scene. So this you're not at uh, the uh, you're at the step below the world tour level with mm. regards to the team. So what exactly does that mean, and what type of races are you entering? Um, so we get the odd sort of. Um, we get the en entry into some of the semi classics and stuff. Okay. Like we did Le Salmon yeah, uh, cool. recently, which people will know. Um, we were hoping to shell the prize that was on today, t earlier today, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and things. So they're they're the sort of top level races that we look at entering. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, a lot of what we do is you know the one day races in Belgium, Holland, mm. um, the UCI 1.2s yeah. is is what the category is for for those that know. Yeah. And um, that's sort of a lot of what our racing is. Um, but I'd say like the, those UCI 1.2 is a very similar level to, or maybe a tiny bit higher level than than the best sort of the national A racing in England. Gotcha. And then you go to a 1.1, which then has world tour teams at, yeah. and the level is is just that much higher again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's where sort of the big boys come out. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so just talk through some of the, races that you've done with the team like around the world i mean literally around the world yeah so like i say 2017 was our first sort of experience or my first experience anyway of, of doing much abroad mm. um and we spent much of that year in in holland and belgium and, and and things and then towards the end of the year we went like a little bit further afield and just sort of I don't know, have a few extra races and, and experience like a different, you know, racing style and things. So yeah. we actually went, we went to Tour of Almaty in Kazakhstan. Yeah, we, wow. Yeah, so. That's cool. Um, so we've done that a couple of times. And then we went to uh, China at the end of the year and did a race called uh, Tour of Quanzhou Bay, yeah. which was brilliant. Um, and this was, what, 17? This is 17, yeah. 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 And we've, we've been back again since uh, we mm. did it in in 18 and 19 yeah and uh, we've always you know we've had pretty good success whenever we've been there max yeah. has won the overall couple of times yeah, so. really. and yeah i've won a couple of stages as well so yeah. it's always it's quite good yeah. sort of way to cap off a season yeah i mean you know you before we started the recording you said you know you know you wanted to kind of make it sort of like relatable to people but you know you had some you had some big wins, you know, like the year before last year with the, 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 you took the sprinters jersey mm. for the tour of Britain. I mean, that's, that's a big achievement. Yeah. I, it's funny that, cause that's the one that people will regularly um, refer to, I suppose. But, yeah. I, you know, I don't look, I don't look back on that with as being 
I mean, it's a highlight, yeah, but I don't necessarily look back at it in the same regard as some of the other ones that I've had. Yeah, um, sure. Simply because, like, I, I, I went there with... I had two objectives, one of which was to win the sprinter's jersey. Yeah. And then not that many riders will go to the Tour of Britain, yeah. you know, hoping to win the sprint's jersey. Yeah, okay. Um, so for me to go there and actually plan on doing it, you know, yeah. I was sort of in a slightly unique situation. In terms Is that of just going because of the nature of the race? Yeah, I think a lot of guys will, will, you know, they'll do a couple of stages, they'll be in contention, and then sure. suddenly they'll have they'll be looking at it. So I was going up against uh, Dries de Bont, who's mm -hmm. the Belgium champ, and another guy called Gedeminus Bagdonis, who, mm -hmm. who rides at H2R. Yeah. And I think, you know, their interest came about purely as it was kind of situational, you know, they're in the break and then so sure enough, like they'll, they'll have a crack for it. Yeah. And that's kind of how it went. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And by the end of the race, you know, I was I was so exhausted. It was just more relief than elation I think. yeah yeah um, sure 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 because yeah i mean I, I the other one that i really hoped to get out of it i wanted to finish on a podium i wanted to get a top three finish on one of the stages yeah um which i felt was realistic um and on the stage that i decided not to go for the break ironically was a fairly easy stage where i could have wrapped up the jersey there and then okay it, instead i stayed in the i stayed in the bunch and then crashed with 18k to go and actually um cracked i, I think I, cr I cracked a couple of ribs oh, basically no. so it was just a nightmare from you know in every in every aspect so i'd and gone from you know being well in control to suddenly having like a bit of a dog fight on my hands just to just to finish the race in in red so how many stages left four i think <laughs> yeah oh man a week before the yeah, yeah, yeah. before the world as well oh, so was, everything was just like yeah yeah it was just a nightmare and then I mean, we'll get into sort of some of the sort of finer details, but I mean, you know, obviously we, you then, you know, we ran into you up in, in Harrogate, we were up there mm. and you were racing for Ireland. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what a, uh, I just, I mean, it was one of those moments. It was like, fucking A, like, <laughs> look at him, man. He's, 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 he's racing. I mean, yeah. you, you said you had a really grim day and the, the weather was appalling. Yeah. And it was a hard race. I but, mean, fair play to you. I think it was worse as a spectator that day. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so just talk to you about how, one how that came about and and you know that experience of it because not many people get that get that opportunity to race at the world. Yeah, well, well I suppose it's, I should start by explaining that um, I'd I'd obviously I'm born and raised in the UK. Yeah. Um, and the Irish connection is well, basically all of my dad's family are based over there. So yeah. um, I've I've got a sort of bigger Irish family than I have English. In yeah, a way. sure. So. Um, and it came about through my cousin, who was um, part of the the Irish sort of cycling federation. Okay. And he he sort of came to me and said, you know, like we could we could really use you, and it just went from there. So um, I I changed my colours and and it was you know it was a great decision. So that was, so you changed the colours for the world, did you? Well, it was or, it all was, that year. It was the yeah I changed the year before. Okay, actually. fine. Yeah. Um, and, and you've been racing for them since. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So that year in um, in 2019, I started by uh, I, I got invited out to Tokyo to do the um, the test event for the Olympics. Okay, which was just uh, an amazing experience. Yeah, so yeah, that was, sure. That was just unbelievable. And then I went on and did the Euros with them, uh, riding for Sam. And then, yeah, got a quite a late call up to the Worlds as well yeah. after after Tour of Britain. So, um, and were you yeah, supposed to be going. riding for anybody else, or was it just a check in and, and see what happens at the Worlds? Yeah, yeah. Um, not really. No. Um, I mean, we had you know, we, if Sam had been able to get around, then it would have been great. But yeah. it was such a hard hard Brutal. day. You know, anything could have happened, and yeah. Um, so I was sort of just making sure we're trying to trying to give him as easy a ride as possible and then we got onto the circuit and it was just like someone you know pulled the pin out of the grenade and it, it, you know it just went everywhere and i was in the end i got held up in the um gilbert crash okay so i was just like hacking around with that group really yeah, yeah, and yeah. then um just trying to trying to basically finish mm. so um yeah i was out i had a long day by myself yeah that yeah. one so and then when i eventually pulled in they're like oh you're the last one out i was like well, uh, <laughs> you know uh, where are the rest of the boys <laughs> um so that's funny i mean you know just purely from uh obviously i know you but just purely from a fan standpoint 
what's that like, man? Just being on the on the start line for the world championships, you oh, know, it's, like it's just so, oh, around, so proud, like oh, just around people that you know. I mean, you know, a lot of the riders there are, 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 are world renowned pros. who are obviously many years older than you, so you would have been looking up to them, going, actually, I'm. I've I've earned this place, and I'm on a start line next. Uh, I mean, you said you just you've just mentioned that you were in the same crash as yeah. Philippe Gilbert, like ex world champ, like multiple Belgian champ. Yeah, I, to be honest, like I don't, I don't look at them sure in as much in so much or okay. I think is if I if I wasn't racing, it'd be different. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I suppose you're their competitor, not yeah, a, and we, not a fan, you know, yeah. I race, race with them enough, like yeah. beat, beating them before. Yeah, yeah. It, to be honest, and it's definitely worth like having respect for these guys. But mm. unfortunately, you know, sometimes you race with these guys and you realise they're not quite. The, yeah, um, of course. The, the you mm. know the nice characters they might come across. Um, yeah. So yeah, interesting. That's kind of one thing. It was more for me. It was more about like, wow, what a what a proud moment to be here, yeah. like riding um, this race. When I when I first started riding, um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they imagine themselves like riding the tour or yeah. the Giro, w whatever it might be, yeah. Roubaix. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I've always been about the international events, yeah. so the Worlds and the Olympics. Olympics like that's yeah. that's my two. That's always been like my dream to mm. to, to to do those. Mm. So it was sort of a weird bucket list moment, really, to kick yeah. off. Um, so yeah it was funny there was there was just a whole raft of emotions so yeah sure um we the night before um my parents were driving up and my granddad had been really unwell oh and it, yeah it was literally the, I, you know i said to my mum like you know whatever happens like just just let me know yeah and yeah she was on her way up and he passed away oh, so my God. there was a lot going on then it just felt like the race was in a way the best thing that could have happened and yeah. it was a great thing to use to sort of mark his kind of like memory as well. Wow, um, that's powerful, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that was my whole motivation for, for at least trying to finish. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, I just, yeah, I had the broom wagon sort of like on my tail asking me when I was gonna get in. I thought <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see you at the finish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Yeah. amazing, man. So, um, I mean, yeah. and. It, from as you know somebody who's obviously sort of seen your sort of career develop it was it was wicked it was really really cool watching you watching you race up there mm -hmm. um but i mean maybe let's kind of like take it back a you know a few years like suppose there's there's had to be that transition when it was you know it turned from you know like a fun hobby into actually i can make something of this and maybe talk about that transition from being a part-time into getting that first professional contract and really, I mean, from a just understanding actually what that looked like, you know, what that enabled you to do, and 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 the did you start approaching cycling differently because of it? Um, it's funny because like this is gonna it's be sound a bit weird to people that are listening because I I don't know at what point I ever really loved it as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember you. I remember you saying that. Do you remember ages, years ago we did the Giro Prestige night mm -hmm. where we kind of like relaunched the team, and um, had yourself, Yanto, and Chris, Chris Lilly White. Yeah. And you said you said that, and it kind of took a few people off guard because you were like, "I don't really like cycling, but I love racing." Mm. And that mentality, you know, that's the kind of you know that obviously is what set you apart because it's like it's like yeah, cycling's you know you know all right, but. I just want to compete. Yeah, I. Well, first and foremost, I, I just love sport. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just always been mad for it, whatever it's been like. Yeah. You know, football, hockey, yeah, yeah. rugby. Yeah. Um, the thing I that I love about cycling um, is the sort of nature of like the self improvement aspect yeah. of it. So I know that I might not be the most talented rider. Yeah. And I know that to be true because yeah. if I had been, you know, I would have been cleaning up as a youth. That's generally what you see, you know, sure, sure, the sure. talented lads are the ones that clean that up sense. when they're kids. Yeah. And I was so far off it. Yeah. But I just knew that if I worked harder than everyone else around me, mm. that that would pay off. Yeah. Um, so I've always tried to surround myself with guys who have pushed me. Yeah. Until I'm eventually like at their level and, and and getting past them, so yeah. I don't I don't look at I don't sit down and cycling and look at like I'm going to be world champion. Yeah, you know, I, at every stage I've been at, I've been like, 
you know, when I first started, I was like, I want to be Hillingdon club mm. champion. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, oh yeah, I'd, you know, I'd like to win a Hillingdon Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. After that, it was, oh, I'd love to win one of those Surrey League handicap races. Yeah. And it's always been like minor goals without any idea of what the sort of end point would be. Yeah. And that's kind of still where I am. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know where I'll be. I just want to be as good as I can possibly be. Yeah. So whatever is, whatever I need to do to make that happen is is really what drives me. So I suppose, I mean, maybe I'm jumping ahead a bit, but you know, at the minute, you know, we're at the beginning of a season, and at the end of a really weird season last mm. year with so many cancellations. What's your goals for this year, like from a from a personal standpoint? As in, what what's your your kind of goals that you're aiming towards? Well, I have a few like performance related goals that that I want to you know hit and yeah. so on but um ultimately like I just want to perform as well as I can yeah. at a consistent level yeah. and then what I hope will come from that mm. will be a place on the on the Olympic squad amazing for the road race and you know an opportunity with a, a world tour team and uh, is is uh is the Olympics for sure happening this year yeah yeah, yeah from cool. what from everything I've I've seen Great. so I'm part of a I think it's I don't know if it's a five or six man shortlist okay. for the Irish squad and there's three spots so Oh really? Yeah, it'll be it'll be it'll, it will be tight but yeah that will be you know I have to have some level of belief that, that it yeah. could happen and and uh, you know at the very least like I've been there and I've experienced Tokyo once and yeah. I didn't perform terribly. Yeah, I sure. feel like I made a good account of myself so yeah. you know I can just hope that things go my way. Yeah. Yeah, cool man. All right, well let's kind of you know sort of pick that pick that up uh, in the future but the um when that kind of self-improvement that you're sort of like talking to mm. when did you start to kind of like realize and acknowledge that not only was it the effort paying off but then actually there was a career forming in front of you was there a moment or did it just start to you know just as the rabbit hole goes just things start to kind of open up it's hard to pinpoint an exact moment. There's been a few moments along the way where I felt like, um, well, maybe I've surprised myself. I thought, wow, yeah, I've, you know, I've kind of got something here. Yeah. Um, just, uh, you know, one race or another. Um, but yeah, I can't, I can't really pinpoint an exact moment that I felt like that it, it was changing as such. Mm -hmm. I remember like in terms of, of the career and stuff i remember when i got my first contract that felt quite big yeah cool. um and you know, how old like, were you then um when was that that was 2016 so that was how many years ago is that now five years oh yeah five so years. I, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like 19. and so that was a here you go here's a contract You're, we're I, gonna we're gonna pay you to yeah cycle. yeah and you got you gotta remember as well like i'd never even had a work contract before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know i worked down the pub yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. i've been paid in cash yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was yeah. so it was like to me it was just like wow like this is crazy and it was also trying to get my head around the fact that god i've just been like you know hacking around like racing with my mates and now i'm there was there was an interesting sort of switch in pressure as it went from like okay there's there's now an expectation yeah yeah but I, and I there's was, a piece of paper that says yeah so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i was i was like that that wasn't like a negative in my head yeah, yeah. Like, oh, i loved that yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. i was like oh, i'm gonna sh i'm gonna show them like yeah. that i'm worth it yeah that was really my my thing yeah. um that's fun so that that was that was cool and so then, you were 19 then 19 yeah 20. and then also getting the Getting the first call up for Ireland was was massive, yeah. And then getting on, just being on the shortlist as well, actually yeah. felt like a yeah. a big one for me, um, because like it, like I mentioned earlier, like yeah. the Olympics is just a dream for me. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I mean, just you know, even I get excited about hearing it. You know, like you know, here's this kind of you know nineteen year old who's you know raised in the in the UK sort of like local scene, literally local roads to here at the cafe. Mm. Um, both on road and off road, as in crits and you know, kind of like road races. And then here you are getting a getting a contract. So what did that you know? Maybe let's talk about the UK scene, and for you, how those races started to kind of develop and 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 the, how you kind of start to kind of move move up a notch. Because I mean, you've got different categories of riders, but then you've got different types of racing. 
and you just kind of started working your way up through from from a junior. Yeah, I. The reason I'm saying that is because it actually, you know, you're sat here as a professional cyclist, you know, with world tour ambitions and Olympic ambitions, but it started here locally, mm -hmm. and it makes it very achievable. It makes it kind of like very realistic for people. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think what's important to to think about is. You know, when I was when I was racing locally, I didn't have these. I didn't have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand the the aspiration you, like, of the Olympics. Yeah, when I wasn't you were necessarily. 12. I wasn't. Yeah, necessarily, yeah. It was like it was just a dream. Yeah, it wasn't a goal. Yeah, yeah sure. And they're these two very different things. And my my goals were very local. Were set locally. Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, like when I was a kid, um, I would literally race as much as I could. You yeah. know, um, Monday we go to. Palmer Park um, in Reading. Yeah. Tuesday would be Hillingdon. Yeah. Wednesday would be uh, Aldershot. Yeah. Thursday I'd do like the local Hounslow 10 mile time trial yeah. or Surrey League Handicap. Mm. Friday go to, could, could go to Wellin. And then, you know, Saturday, Sunday you go wherever, Hog Hill or Hillingdon yeah, would yeah. usually be the two. Yeah. Um, I had a look on Strava and just, just on Strava I've done Oh, I've done over a thousand laps around Hillingdon. Now. <laughs> That's so uh, good. And you think like I, you know, I was riding like a l long time yeah, yeah, before yeah. GPS computers. So I mean, obviously, you know, Hillingdon. Uh, for for listeners who sort of don't know what it is, it's essentially it's a it's a, a, a you know a cycle a cycle specific circuit that's not on the main roads. Um, that's completely closed off specifically for cycling, yeah. and it opens up the opportunity for for men and women of all ages and all levels to race together in a lapped format yeah. so is that we were talking about belgian and sort of like dutch racing earlier is that very specific to the uk or do you get the, the cycle parks in in belgium and holland it's a good question because i never raced loads in as a youth yeah. over there but i would say it's pretty unique yeah sure the uk yeah, yeah. And it's, it's probably like come about because closing roads over here is is you know is such a hassle and things yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. it's sort of it's a part of the culture there. They get exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas like they here, yeah. here, the explanation is, is half the battle. Yeah. You know, having to explain why the road is closed. So mm. it's come about as, as a result of that. But those races are just such a great way to like learn. Yeah. You know, race, race craft. craft. Yeah, yeah. And Hillingdon especially, it's like, it's like a safe place to race. Yeah. Because, um, you know, it's, it's a flat flowing circuit. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can go doesn't matter how hard you go like you, you're probably not going to be dropped so <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. that that in itself is like quite freeing and yeah. it, it, it then as a result sort of encourages aggressive racing and yeah. stuff and yeah, yeah it just suited me down to the ground and so I, I used to, I used to love nothing more than getting into like when I was when I was a youth especially like mm. riding up with the seniors and stuff I used to love it yeah yeah, yeah um yeah. giving like Tony Gibb a good, a yeah, good yeah, go yeah. And, and stuff like yeah um biting at his heels and it was uh, interesting that's that's how i kind of got picked up with the team now um was from racing at aldershot and racing with the seniors and stuff and, and like i said like, i was never finishing anywhere i was yeah. you know yeah. so you were how old um i was like 15 okay I and, think. No, and no no i would have been younger 14 and you were racing with cat one elite yeah yeah yeah. i oh, was really? racing i was racing with like tim my manager now oh really and how that's funny. this is how it all came about how so amazing like fair play to to tim and, and craig peters who, who owns pedal heaven yeah. um they literally took me based on my attitude i suppose yeah, it was yeah. like they they they, they saw something yeah, well yeah. it must yeah, yeah. be yeah they they just went off the fact that you know i like i like to get stuck in yeah. they like the style that i raced yeah, and yeah. <laughs> no, honestly i really le i left nothing out there <laughs> yeah um fun. yeah so it, it was um i think that's kind of how it happened yeah how i got involved originally so the uk system obviously is points based so you know you yeah get x amount of points for a win and then dot dot, dot. so to get up the level you have to acquire more points over a year mm. i don't know if they've carried over the last year so yeah, I think they've they've allowed it like they freezed it or okay fine say. so what age were you when you got your elite level license it came pretty quick, I think, because I went straight out of uh, youth straight to a second cat. Okay, fine. Um, just for some r rule or another. Yeah. Um, and then I couldn't I couldn't give you a date on when it happened, but yeah, I, yeah. I'd say it came along pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and then 
I think I think one year I was rank I had the highest ranking. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the in terms of I was number one ranked ride in the UK. Yeah. Um, which at the time was seemed pretty cool. So even though that's I don't wicked. Think, I don't think as many people were paying attention to it as, yeah, I, yeah. as I was. So. You were, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, that, that was that was nice. And then, so unfortunately, you know, we do these big UCI races and they, they don't come up on the BC website. <laughs> so it's sort of a different, that's uh, funny. it's like a different league as yeah, such. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously the, the UK scene has worked out for you, you know, and, and others, you know. Yeah. We're seeing, at the moment, we're seeing a lot more UK cyclists make more of an impression in the in the uh, you know European or well, the Conti mm, and the mm. World Tour scene. You know, I mean, how in hindsight, how do you feel that it's you know it is set up uh, to seeing you know a pathway through to professional being a professional cyclist? Um, ultimately, I think if you're good enough, you'll make it. Yeah, that's that's the underlying thing. So. Um, but there are certain limits to being in the UK, which can sometimes be difficult um, to a rider. But in in 2019, I think there was five or six guys from the UK yeah. that that moved up. Yeah, to World Tour. Yeah, yeah to yeah. World Tour or, or Pro Conti at least. Yeah. So you yeah. know, like Connor Swift, yeah. uh, Matt Holmes, yeah. John Dibbon. There's yeah. a, f- a few lads that moved. Uh, uh, Gabs Kaleg, yeah. who who moved up. So. Um, you know, you can't say that there's not an opportunity now. Yeah. And, um, but ultimately I think we are so reliant on the tour of Britain and Yorkshire to really- Get eyes on racing. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to be the thing that, that launches us. Yeah. Um, but is that is that eyes on racing from a like a like a, a team standpoint yeah, to say, oh, this, team. You know, this guy looks okay. Yeah, yeah, from the yeah, teams that have been there. And um, is that just because traditionally these teams are, or well, the majority of the teams are European based? Yeah. And so they much. just look at European races. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, um, and for a lot of you, you know, we, we, we're lucky, you know, a lot, of, a lot of our racing has been done on the continent and stuff like that. But yeah. for a lot of UK teams, it's not, not the case. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like I say, they are heavily reliant on, on results from those, yeah. from those two races. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll ask a potentially sort of like difficult question. I mean, I know that you had plans in the last couple of years to go up to World Tour and it hasn't happened. Mm. I mean, what's your sort of reflections on that now and, and is that still a goal? Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a goal. Um, and I really f- feel like um, that I should be there. Yeah, sure. To be honest. Yeah. Um, I think in 2019, I was the best rider in the UK. Yeah. I won every national series race I did. Yeah. So I heard, I heard at the beginning of the year, it was like a, just one of the sort of warm up races. I forget what it was. And you came and you lapped the field. <laughs> I was talking to George about it. George it must Dory. have been a small circuit. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, you know, obviously these are other elite, elite teams and you sort of just come in and you lap the field. Yeah. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty good. I actually remember um, I hadn't, I hadn't been with my, girlfriend grace that long at that point and i told her to come down to that one i'd be yeah. like so the, pre- the, pre- the pressure was on that's funny yeah as far as she's concerned it was world championships yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least that's how i built it up oh, that's so, amazing um that's why you lapped it yeah, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's um funny. so but i mean you know sort of like we're joking about it but obviously and i, I you know i referenced back to this the point that you know you started on the on you know at hillingdon and you mm. by your you know your own words were saying that you were not performing you know kind of you weren't one of these standout stars but no. you worked hard and now you're at a position where you're saying with confidence and i say confidence not arrogance you know that you were the best in the, in the uk and and you can tell there's that drive to say no i should be up there and i want to be up there and yeah. i know that i can perform there mm. um I, listen I, I if i if i left the sport tomorrow i wouldn't be thinking god i can't believe i didn't make it sure okay there's so much that i've done yeah yeah that i never thought i would would have had an opportunity to yeah, do yeah yeah um you know, I believe that I've said, I've said, I've, I've, you know, Max and I talk about it sometimes, like, yeah. cause Max deserves to be there as well. Yeah. And we've both said, you know, in 20 years time, we'll look back on like the races in like Turkey and China and yeah, Kazakhstan. Yeah. And those will be the ones that we really remember. Yeah, of course. Um, I just want, I want the opportunity to be there to, like I say, to, to find out 
where how how good I can be. Yeah. It it all comes back to that sort of self improvement thing, and yeah. you know ultimately if I surround myself with better riders yeah. and better facilities and, you know, I can go on training yeah, camps when it, whenever I want. Well, and, that, was and one of the, that was one of the things you said before we started recording, you know, is obviously because the World Tour have been able to continue racing. Mm. You felt the gap between the Pro Conti level where your team is and the World Tour is, is much bigger now. You know, and is that just simply down to access to racing? Is it simply down to ask? access to the support team like you know what 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 is that well i say ordinarily it's you know it's a combination of worse things but right now it is just a, it's all about the the lack of racing yeah. that we've been exposed to yeah sure um i think in 2019 i had it would have been like it could have even been 10 10 race days yeah yeah so um jesus yeah, it was just a short, sorry, that was 2020, yeah, uh, 2020 about 10, yeah. 10 race days. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just decimated. Yeah. And then, you know, meanwhile, they're off and they're having to split teams because they, they haven't got enough riders to fill each kind of tour, you know, because <laughs> they, you know, the big races still go ahead. And yeah. um, so this year, like, you know, the first few races, it's been like a bit of adjustment for, for a lot of the lads. So you have been racing this year? Yeah, so we've done, well, actually started really well. We, we did a race out a UCI race when we were on training camp in Spain and that was great. So yeah. I was eighth, I finished eighth there, which great. was which was a nice start. And then since then we've done uh, Le Samin in yeah. Belgium. Yeah. Uh, we did uh, GP Moncier as mm -hmm. well the, f the same week. Um, and most recently we did a UCI 1.1 in France. Okay. Um, and yeah, th th those 1.1s are the ones that have been really challenging. Yeah. Um, but you know, even even that race at the start of the year in Spain, where I was when I was up there, yeah. I was the only rider, uh, Conti level rider in the top thirty. Brilliant. So yeah, brilliant. And it, uh, that's that says less. It's not to say you know what I mean. It's more about like that. That just shows like the difference I think yeah, yeah. between us and the guys that have been able to race. Yeah. So, so I mean, from a, it, is it from your standpoint? because I, I really don't know how it works do you approach teams do they approach you do you have a you know like a, a greatest hit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i mean i should really <laughs> have a yeah. i should really have more of an idea than i do i suppose yeah. so, um i have like i have an agent who helps me out okay gotcha. um and is you know is well connected and does sort of the uh the stuff but you know yeah. ultimately nothing happens without results of course um you know I, i'm young but i'm not yeah, sure. That sure, young sure. anymore. Yeah. You're 25. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not really like young enough to be like a uh, up and coming, mm. despite sort of you know I could I could go into me and explain to them oh, I had this problem and that yeah, problem yeah, when yeah. I was a junior, blah blah blah. But you know they yeah, don't want to hear it. They like, want to see results. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and equally, right. like you know, I've probably got good numbers in terms of the power numbers and stuff I do, mm. but you know, there's a thousand people on the Zwift that does that these days. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. yeah apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and they're all half the weight of me. So, exactly. yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of forty kilo uh, yeah. middle aged men out there. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I in in 2019 that was the year that I said like I was hoping to move up, and yeah. that was a case of trying to make the most of the good days that I had. Yeah. Um, so I remember we did this race in in Belgium called Heises Pilge. It's yeah. like a semi classic. So yeah. It's a it's a decent race. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was just on a I was on a great day been up the road all day wasn't even supposed to be in the break i wanted to go for the finish yeah but uh we're you know we're getting pressured like a team like us we always need to be represented yeah, so i thought oh god i'm gonna have to go so is that from a like a marketing standpoint yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's it, you know Just it's important for the sponsors got, yeah, gotcha. yeah for us sponsors, to show yeah. yeah for us to show we're about um and so i you know i ended up in a situation that i thought wasn't ideal and it was about trying to make the most of it from there so mm. um you'll always see like in the races, you know, the, the, the group will keep the breakaway pegged and, and, and stuff and then they start winding them in. Mm. And I was in a group of six and we we kept it pretty steady for most of the day. Yeah. Um, we had like a decent gap. And then it was when we got into the finishing circuits, really started cranking it up. Mm. And I really started like giving it some. And there was three of us with like 6K to go and we've still got like a decent gap. And I'm thinking, here we go. This could be on here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we went up the last climb and I was 
sort of like I'm not really built like a climber, but mm -hmm. so I sort of like more kind of ha trying to hang on rather than think of attacking. And a Belgian climb though is different from an yeah, Alpine climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was covered in cobbles <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. short and steep. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, like a group came across to us in, in that like the group of basically the leaders for the race, mm. and um, we sprinted for the line. And I ended up finishing third that day behind Jasper Philipson Amazing. and Alvaro Hodge, uh, like just ahead of Bohani, for example. Yeah, yeah. So it was yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. was like a great day for me. You avoided the Bohani elbow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Still, I thought he's going left, I'm going right. So um, yeah, so that, that was a great day. And then, and then, you know, that, for example, I literally went to the podium, finished the race. Yeah. First place I went to was like, the team that I wanted to sign for. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I was like, look, you know, come on, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. let's have a chat. And yeah, that, that was kind of like my way of trying to go about yeah. it to get yeah. myself like known. Because um, I mean, it's interesting and, and I appreciate you sharing it because it kind of shows the sort of like the, 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 the you know, the reality of, of trying to make it in that pro scene because obviously the UK has seen great success on a global level, on a world tour level over the last 10 years with, you know, Team Sky and now Ineos, Ineos Grenadiers. Um, but the, for the for the majority of people that found success there, they had pretty much mapped out a very clear route from track all the way through. So it was kind of almost like you do each bit and then you get a little bit further up. Mm, mm. Whereas obviously that's you know that's worked for them. But the tr more traditional method is exactly as you've been doing. It's that kind of you know work your ass off locally and then kind of get more eyes on what you're doing and doing. Um, and yeah, hopefully it will it will continue to sort of pay off. Mm. I mean, we are seeing a lot more UK riders in the pro peloton that haven't come through Ineos, which yeah. is which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and equally, like there is a gr there's a big desire from pro teams yeah. to have UK riders, yeah. Yeah. which is a really you know good good situation to be in. And it's all come about of like basically the cycling boom in the UK. For sure. I mean, you reference you know one of your sort of you know teammates, Sam Bennett. You know, I mean, he's killing it in arguably the greatest classics team ever. Mm. And he's killing it in Grand Tours. He's killing it. You know, it's it's amazing to see. Yeah. And I've got to like Sam is like a massive sort of in, like inspiration yeah. for me yeah. in terms of like how he's how he's forged his path. Yeah. Because, you know, he's 29 now. Yeah. And again, like he's not necessarily a young, a young guy. And no. he's had to really scrap. Yeah, yeah and work his way through so uh, I would have he's had a lot of setbacks as well i would have yeah i would have assumed he was younger mm. because he's only really had I sort of big, biz, do, bigger yeah. success recently but I, it, it's great to kind of hear that actually it's it's many years paying off yeah yeah, yeah. Um, he, he spent a lot of years with uh the unpost chain reaction yeah. like the the irish yeah, team yeah, yeah, and know, stuff yeah, yeah. and interesting you know and i've worked with the manager that he had there kurt bogarts mm. and he you know he said to me there was times that you know, Sam was just wanted to quit that yeah, he was done course, with the sport and stuff. Um, and so he's, he's one that I really look at and think, you mm. know, there, there's still hope yeah, despite yeah. the sort of like setbacks that, yeah, yeah. that I've had. Um, and ultimately, you know, there, for the amount of people that race their bikes at an elite level, you know, there is only a certain number of, of world tour spots. So there's that element of, of luck as well as performance. Mm. Um, and I, I, well, I mean, I just I hope it works out for you, man. Um, you know, just as yeah. just you know, as a not only seeing you come through the shop so often, but it'd be great to kind of see you on that stage. Mm. Maybe you too could be vomiting on live TV <laughs> in the breakaway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I ended up vomiting after his riff race. Oh, time, so oh that, tells no. you, that tells you the current situation. That was it? amazing. Yeah. Just pulls to the back of the or the pack, <laughs> spews out the side, and then gets back on the front. He's so great. That, oh, it's, yeah, it's he's, wicked, mate. He's great. Um, so uh, before we, we, we went live with this, we got some, we put it up on Instagram, we got some questions. So it's question time for, for Rory. How's that sound, mate? Yeah, let's get stuck in. Um, all right. So thank you everybody for uh, sending all these in. Let's bring these up. All right. So I've got a couple here from, um, so we've had a few of the similar similar things i'll just kind of throw them all in but um to date what's your uh every year on the calendar what's your favorite race favorite race is the rutland sickle classic okay b 
bit, um, yeah, not one, not a, not a household name in the world of pro cycling, mm. but it's it's a great, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a local great one. Race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's really cool. Like we go and you know dirt tracks and mm. and it's got a bit of everything in it. Um, and I think a lot of British riders will say the same. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's one they always sort of enjoy. And um, Rutland's like a, such a lovely area as yeah, well. Yeah. So all that thrown in. And have you won that? I was second in 2019. <sighs> Yeah. Um, so I actually, it was a friend of mine, Gabs Kalei, who I mentioned earlier, yeah, he, yeah. he thought he'd won, celebrated, and then me and a American, oh, this American yeah. guy r- rolled him on the line. So oh, no. I almost wish, I almost wish that he just won it yeah. and I was there. But oh, yeah, man. that's the way it goes. So that was, <laughs> that's brutal. It's something you only once in your life, I think. That's funny. Um, um, yeah. And so what's your favorite race? that you've done as in like not the a regular calendar that you look forward to but when you look back and kind of go shit that was a good day or good week um <laughs> i'm gonna go with i think the race we did this three-day race in in kazakhstan that tour of almaty i think i'll go with that okay yeah just a really random yeah, one yeah. i look back on with like great memories yeah so that's I, fun i actually won, i won the climb the king of the mountains jersey there from, oh, from being amazing. the breakaway and I ended up on the, I was on the podium with, um, the podium was presented by Vinokurov. Oh <laughs> and I was up there How with uh, Fugusang, Alexei Lukchenko, oh and a guy called uh, Remy Di Gregorio as well. How who, funny, man. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was that's, the most. I didn't know that. That's a yeah, great it was story. the most lit podium in every sense of the word. <laughs> that's funny, man. Um, what's your, this is from our very own Jamie. What's your uh, grimmest day on the bike? Um, worst day I've had on a bike. Uh, the world's was definitely pretty high up there. Yeah. That had to be, that was pretty bad. Um, but actually, when I was actually in it, it didn't feel, the cold didn't quite get to me. So yeah, sure. I, there was a race, the stage that I did it, there was a stage that at Yorkshire, um, equally bad conditions and I was so unwell I couldn't keep anything down oh, no. and that will I'll put that down as the worst day I've had I was just horrendously ill I had to put out that, that oh, evening no. um, and yeah cold wet horrendous weather that that was the hardest day I think I've, I've ever had that was 2019 because there's that like you know you've kind of you know talked about it a little bit but there's that whole thing of and maybe, or maybe, th- maybe this is just a question for me. Like, at what point do you think it turns from physical capability to mental strength? Um, and I suppose that goes from not only the discipline around training, but also just in a race. Because it's, you know, when you're feeling that awful, at what point do you just go, nah? Or at what point do you go, well, I'm going to, you know, get around? There's obviously that certain thing in your head where you think, you know, there's sometimes there can be something going on you and you know that, okay, I, I can recover from this. Yeah. Um, we did a race in France a couple of weeks ago and for the first hour I was struggling to see cause I was having such, I had such bad migraine. <laughs> oh my God. And I was also getting barked at if I was supposed to be like chasing, like keeping tabs on the breakaway and, and things like that. Yeah. And I was just, I felt ill yeah. from it. Yeah. And I just felt like I just needed to weather the storm and yeah, get yeah, through yeah. it. And in the end it turned into a pretty good day. Okay. Um, so it's, I suppose it's more about, yeah, it's very situational. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, a pretty uh, generic question from our very own Harry Mack. Fastest speed ever. Probably on the flat. That's probably a better question. Fast, oh. Fastest speed on, on, in a sprint. Oh, we did a, we did a, there's the second stage, uh, stage two that I did in China last year. Yeah. Um, or oh, sorry, the year before. Um, I think I finished my, I think I, the top speed I hit in the sprint was 68k an hour. Um, <laughs> that was, a, it was a, f- a flat finish where well, it was slightly downhill, but it had a headwind. So I'll call it a flat finish. Um, <laughs> and most of the credit for that has to go to my teammate, Ryan Christensen. Yeah. Yeah. Who did about a 600 meter lead out. I thought we were, I was like, we are so out of this. Yeah, yeah. And he, I'm panicking and he's like, just be calm, just be calm. 
And he started, he scrapped the saddle and started this effort, like I say, sprinting flat out for 600 meters. He literally dropped me in the front of the group 200 meters to go. And Amazing. I just, I just set off. And off you go. Anybody knew, I don't think anyone saw it coming. So, so good, man. And that was, that's phenomenal. Like, yeah. So good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for that one, um, Harry. Yeah. The, fa- got- the fastest I've gone down on yeah, downhill, yeah. 120 k yeah. an hour. What? Yeah. Where? How? I remember that one. That was a cool. Day. That was uh, we did a race around the Nurburgring in Germany. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it was yeah. You can imagine like yeah, yeah. perfect, perfect, and like sort of uh, perfect oh, surface. Like really, really hot day, so it was fast as Safe. well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't even touch the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 120 k an hour. Holy shit! Yeah, and it felt, but it felt like it felt like going 40. You know. Oh, man. Like, um, all right. So, a uh, question here from Pete Clifton: Hillingdon race tomorrow. How excited would you be? <laughs> uh, because, honestly, uh, the, I've heard their um, the racing's back on and stuff like that, and I've really missed the boat on the entries because I, you know, it's been a while since I raced there, but yeah. yeah. Any, you know, I take yeah, yeah. it anything right now, That's but especially fine. healing, it would be yeah, great yeah. to just like get back there and sort of like back to basics. Yeah, like yeah. The, you go, there, there's no pressure, I don't yeah. feel anything. It's just great fun. Yeah, yeah great. Um, <laughs> you might have to. You can probably guess who this is from, but who was the best Australian that you were ever that you've ever been in a breakaway with? Best Australian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm absolutely racking my brains now. It's from uh, from Dan Bonello. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh! What a great guy! He's, um, he's a, he is one of the all times, mate. He's a great, he's, great he's, guy. He's a great. That was a great day, yeah, to yeah. be fair. So, what was that? What was the context? That is actually a brilliant day. I'm so glad he's brought that up. <laughs> 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 um, that was the first, a lot of these stories keep coming back to like racing in China, but <laughs> um, that was the first. The, it was the first race we'd ever done there in 2017, Quanzhou uh, Bay. And the stage, it was 105k stage. It was it was point to point, and we had a tail in the whole way. And Harry uh, Tamfield, my teammate, and I managed to get ourselves in, in a move with Dan and a couple other lads. And Harry had his like 56 chain ring on. I had like a good like 55 on there as well. And we were we were honestly, I don't know. It was felt like one of those days where you couldn't even feel your legs. It was oh, just amazing. going that well, yeah, yeah. and we were just absolutely like churning the gear over and we had it was like the uh uni sa the australian composite team chasing us down okay it was it was, it was ridiculous it was like um mitch docker <laughs> cam meyer um durbo turbo oh um, rob stannard jai hindley yeah uh, like Jesus. and we put we put two minutes into them amazing um yeah, Harry Harry won the stage. I was second, and yeah, it was just it was unreal. And I remember in the hotel that night, and I was saying to Dan, I was like, "I'm gonna have to watch you for tomorrow. Like, I can't let you go." And he's like, "He's like, mate, I've got nothing." Left. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh, that's great. He's a yeah, uh, he's a good dude. Mm. Um, all right, just take a couple more questions <laughs> uh, from um, uh, another one from uh, from from Jamie actually. Uh, Will you be um, will you be dishing out your beadings to fans on the roadside next race? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like, don't be ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, what a ridiculous thing the UCI has got going on right now. Um, question from, oh, it is ridiculous. I hope they get their shit together. But, yeah, hey, it's one of those things. Mm. Um, we might just have a bit of a... Uh, Maybe we'll put a collection point outside the, the front of the shop for people to sew their beads in that <laughs> yeah. protest. Um, question from Josh Whitehead, 20 minute power PB. 443 watts. Jeez. I saw in a, uh, the GCN thing that you'd done a recent new power thing of a thousand watts for 30 seconds. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. I really, really didn't want to have to say that on camera. <laughs> did they? Did they make you say that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's I, a bit I just weird. Thought, uh, yeah, I just yeah. They said that people would love it. I just thought, like, well, my, my teammates will absolutely kill me for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not. It's just not the sort. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um. But yeah. I mean, I suppose uh, you know, I totally hear what you're saying. But knowing that you've kind of been improving when there's been no racing going on, like that's kind of you know, a testament to your work ethic, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I've worked as hard and. 
time we've had off as I've ever had. So. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then I've probably got one. Uh, thanks everybody for those questions. Um, I've probably got one more question. I suppose like knowing that you were, you know, you know, you started out locally. What's the best advice you give to a young guy? starting out on the scene around here or maybe just somebody who's got into cycling, like a young kid who's got into cycling through lockdown and kind of got you know dreams of one day you know kind of you know becoming a pro or just really loves it what's the advice you would give to them just don't just continue to love it like, yeah, yeah and i think my the key bit of advice would be just race yeah. as much as you can yeah 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 like yeah. that's that's where you know that's what matters, yeah, yeah. really. I think if yeah. if, if you if you're doing it for, a, for to be competitive, and you, even if you're doing it to try and like better yourself and, mm. and better your fitness and mm. stuff, just get stuck in. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how you finish. Yeah. I think too many people take it too seriously these days. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The only person the pe person that will be the most critical of you is yourself. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just just race. Great man. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, one final question. Um, all the places you've been, best coffee in Europe? Jura Cafe Asia. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't fishing there. Um, Rory, thank you, mate. Um, I know, you know, I, I think it's important that I say this, you know, like before we started the recording, you know, you know, you, you know, being very humble and saying, you know, I haven't really sort of achieved that much. But, you know, from, from our standpoint, as, you know, somebody who's obviously involved in the local cycle community, but also, you know, just a fan of cycling. It's been amazing to watch you and you, I think you have achieved a lot and I really hope that some more doors open up for you and I do hope we get to see you on the world stage because mm. it'd be great to kind of see yourself test against, you know, that level more regularly. But um, I think your story's great, man. And yeah, I really appreciate your time, buddy. Appreciate that, mate. Cool, thanks, man. Nice.